you doing, Cindy? Um, hopefully I'm gonna make um, dandelion jelly. It's supposed to taste like honey. We'll find out. We've never never tried making dandelion jelly before. Done everything else. So what I do is I'm just doing this. From what we have been told, you want to get as much of the green off as you can and leave just the yellow uh, flower heads or as much of the flower as you can. Yellow as you can. And get as much of the green off as you can. The green from what we are reading and hearing uh, can give it kind of a bitter taste. Okay, so cutting those off was pretty time consuming. But this is what we ended up with. They're really soft, almost like feathers. But uh, there is some green still in it, but not too terrible. Um, we picked all those dandelions yesterday and put them in this pot with hot water and steeped them overnight in the refrigerator with a towel over. So now what I'm doing is I'm extracting the, the dandelion head juice out, the flowers out. This is what it looks like. So. Okay, to make your jelly, um, we let the dandelion flowers steep for about 24 hours and then I pressed all the juice out. So this is basically the tea type. You, this is the juice that we got from the petals. There's actually quite a bit of it. I was really surprised. So there's four cups of the juice. You want to take two tablespoons of lemon juice. And then one box of pectin. Okay, so one box of pectin. One box of pectin. Two tablespoons of um, lemon juice. <laughs> lemon juice and four cups of the tea. You bring that to a boil. Then what you do is you add four cups of sugar. Boil that for two minutes and it has to be kind of a hard boil. Now I've got this boiling and I'm putting four cups of sugar into it. I stop and stir it real good so you don't get any lumps of sugar on the bottom so it doesn't burn. Put some more in. Now this will you stir this and bring it to a hard rolling boil and then you let it boil hard for two minutes. What I do too because I am water bathing them, canning them in a water bath thing, I always have a hot teapot on with water in it just in case I don't have enough water in this or I need to add more. You want to add hot water. Um, I have done it by adding cold water and it drops the temperature way down and start, it's hard for it to get back up. So through the years I've actually learned a few things so that's what I do. I have a teapot here that has um, hot water in it and um, if I need to add more water to my water bathing, I have the, the hot water ready to go so I can just pour it in. And that's really important to make sure you do that, whether you use a teapot or just a kettle. So now I've stirred this and it's got more of an amber color to it. Um, I've had people say to reduce the foam on top, you can put a slice of butter on it. I've never done that. It does seem kind of odd, but it does reduce the foam. Okay, now we're putting the lids on. You just finger tighten them. Oops. What were you saying about not doubling and tripling the batch? You have to do one batch at a time. You have to do one batch at a time. Um, 
I don't really know why, but say um, I have tried it before with just making strawberry or whatever one time, and we doubled the batch and it cooked okay, but it just wouldn't set. So hmm. I, I don't know. You just got to cook one batch at a time. Here's my water. It's boiling pretty good. So you put them in here. You've got to, careful not to, you've got a, um, a jar grabber. So don't, okay. You don't want them touching each other. So obviously I'm going to have to put some more hot water. You want an inch of water above them. So that's about an inch. And this is back on. Turn our heat back up. And we wait for it to become to what we call a, a rolling boil again and, and cook that about 10 minutes. And 10? About 10 minutes, I believe. And that will be a long enough to seal them. What you're trying to do is you're trying to create a vacuum seal so when they cool off you can hear them seal so there we go okay we got our jelly made it's been through the water bathing process I always put a towel out and put it on a towel my jars even though I do have a nice butcher block table don't put it on any sur cold surfaces because your jars are hot cold surfaces could make them crack so Here we go. They've got a beautiful amber kind of color, almost a honey color. They're supposed to taste like honey. They they look like honey. As they cool, you will hear them. You'll hear the um, vacuum seal. You hear. You can actually hear the top go pop, and that means it's sealed. It doesn't look like jelly now, but um, as it, it, you have to kind of let it sit in one area, undisturbed for about 24 hours. As it, the cools, as the stuff cools down, it will start to jellify, basically make it into jelly. Now, because it's hot, it's been boiling and it's hot. It looks more um, like a liquid. But as the as it cools down, it the uh, uh, it'll become it'll it'll become jelly. So, how many batches do you think you can make from the? flowers we picked. I think I can get at least two, maybe three more. The main thing with any type of canning that you do, whether you make jelly, jam, can vegetables, um, any of that stuff, you want to make, the number one thing is making sure everything is sterilized. We, I even, even, I even stuck these in the hot water over here. Um, this little sterilizing thing right here, this little jar thing you put in your jar and that funnel the funnel I sterilize that in the hot water everything you want to that is I think the most important thing is sterilizing I've never canned meat and I just don't really um, want to because meat can be you know you can have real issues with meat even canning vegetables you can have a problem with um, it's rare, but you can get botulism from them if you don't do it right. 
And like I said, the number one thing is making sure that you sterilize, you boil or sterilize everything that you're going to use, even down to your implements that you're going to use. And it actually tastes really good. We tied some of the broth stuff that I made, the steeping of the stuff. It tasted like grass. Yeah, the just the jandelion juice without the sugar and pectin in it. It didn't taste very good. It was it was about like like grass smells when you mow your lawn. But um, what little bit of stuff is in this can, this pot, uh, it tastes pretty good. It's pretty similar to honey. It's not quite the same, but close. Well, we had to redo our jelly. The uh, it didn't gel for some reason, so she. Uh, opened the jars and redid them with a little more pectin in them and this is what it ended up looking like It's clear pretty much it looks a lot like honey and surprisingly enough It tastes a lot like honey, which I don't really understand why it should because bees uh, Make honey with different enzymes and things, but that's what it ended up looking like It's real similar. If you didn't know, if you didn't know probably that it wasn't honey, you wouldn't know. It's close enough. It's it's just a little bit different, but it's good. I mean, I'm glad we gave this a try. We'll make this again. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.